Hi, this is Josh Marshall from TPM Media. It's Tuesday, May 1st, 2007. Yesterday we told you we we're going to bring you a rundown of the latest in the fired U.S. attorney story. But we're going to put that off for one day and return to the topic we were discussing yesterday, the Niger uranium mystery. Yesterday afternoon, a retired CIA analyst named Ray McGovern went on the Tucker Carlson show and basically accused Vice President Cheney of being behind the forgeries. Let's watch the tape. We'll come back afterwards and discuss what McGovern said. But how much time is the CIA spending right now trying to figure out where this bad intelligence came from? For instance, you made reference to the forgery. Mm -hmm. There may have been more than one, but the most famous, of course, was the memo, uh, apparently from an Italian embassy abroad, that suggested that Niger was supplying nuclear material to Iraq. It seems to me we don't know who forged that. Mm -hmm. Is someone trying to find out? Well, that's interesting because Jay Rockefeller, the ranking Democrat on the Senate Intelligence Committee, tried manfully to get that investigated. Uh, Senator uh, Pat Roberts said, no, uh, that would be inappropriate. Inappropriate. And so the well, FBI, CIA doesn't need to wait for the Senate to, yeah, to start an investigation, do they? FBI's job here in this country. CIA has no, no such authorities in this country. But that memo came from abroad. I mean, Some of it came from abroad, but you know, if you trace the memo back and see the characters that are involved, it's my appreciation that the memo leads right back to the doorstep of the Vice President of the United States. So the vice president, you believe, for now, if the vice president was behind that forgery, wouldn't he have done a better job? I don't think he and Lynn, you know, sat down and did it. Right. I think they farmed it out to a cottage industry of former intelligence agents that had, did a rather amateurish job. Who they, specifically? Well, you know, there are people who work for Cheney who are in touch, very close touch with the Italians, who uh, actually have worked for the Italians. Do you have any service. evidences? I mean, that, that's a, that's a. That's a huge deal. Sure. Uh, presumably a felony, certainly an impeachable offense, immoral mm -hmm. as hell. Yeah. So wh who, who did it? Well, these are like the plumbers, you know. Uh, right, but I mean, can you be a lot more specific since you're alleging no, this I crime? Won't, I won't be any more specific right here, but the names have been in the public domain, uh, the people who traveled to Rome and to other countries in Europe to set up this kind of thing, uh, to work with the... Uh, uh, work with the Italians to get this stuff made. So you have no evidence at all that that's true, that you're willing to share publicly? Uh, yeah, I have some evidence, but I'm not willing to share it right here and now. Now, we posted that clip yesterday on TPM, and it's got a lot of attention all across the blogosphere. But here's the deal. Based on my own reporting and discussions with other reporters who've done extensive reporting on the Niger story, I'm actually pretty dubious that the evidence that McGovern is talking about actually exists. However, one of the reasons that we still don't know the, the answer to the mystery about the Niger story is that it's still not really been investigated. Now, we talked about this in yesterday's episode with Condi Rice and whether there's been congressional investigations of the White House's role in the Niger forgeries, but it actually goes beyond that. It's one thing for there to be a congressional investigation, but the Niger forgeries is also a crime, and that makes it something to be investigated by the FBI. Now, go back four years, and Senator Jay Rockefeller actually asked the FBI back in March 2003 to begin an investigation of who was behind the forgeries. Since then, four years now, it's been assumed that the FBI has an ongoing investigation. But actually, back in 2004, when I and my colleagues began investigating this story, law enforcement officials made clear to us that the FBI really was not undertaking any kind of serious investigation. Now, fast forward to 2006. By this time, it was clear that Italian military intelligence, an agency called SISMI, had played a role in passing these documents on to the United States. That means that the FBI needed the cooperation of the Italian government to get to the bottom of what happened. Last year, I spoke to senior federal law enforcement officials who made clear to me that the administration had refused to pressure the Italian government to cooperate with the FBI's investigation. So if Representative Waxman is interested in investigating this story, it's not just a matter of talking to Condi Rice, it's a matter of talking to the officials at the FBI responsible for the criminal investigation and finding out why so little actual investigating has taken place. We're going to take a break now. When we come back, we'll tell you about a new book out about the Duke Cunningham scandal.
Okay, we're back. Like I said before the break, there's a new book coming out on the Duke Cunningham scandal. And as you know, the Cunningham scandal isn't just about Duke Cunningham. It's about Kyle Dusty Fogo. It's about Representative Jerry Lewis, a whole bunch of people in the Congress and also at the CIA and even at the Pentagon. So here's the new book. Let me try to get it here on the screen. It's called The Wrong Stuff. And this book is by the guys who actually broke the story. Marcus Stern is the one who wrote the first story about Duke's house deal, which set the, hall, the whole uh, ball rolling. And he's got his, the co-authors are Stern, Jerry Cammer, Dean Galbraith, and George Condon. They're the group who reported this story for a Copley News Service uh, for the San Diego Union Tribune. So I strongly recommend it. Uh, it's going to be out in a couple weeks, and I'm going to be digging into it to see what new revelations these guys have to share. Tomorrow, we're going to bring you that rundown of the latest in the fired U.S. attorney scandal. I'm Josh Marshall, TPN Media, and we'll talk to you then.